Now I know what you're thinking, why is there a Christmas tree next to you and not the Seven Days of Science set? I forgot that this is where the Christmas tree goes. And this is also where the set goes. So there's no room for the set. And I can't really move the Christmas tree. Because I've already decorated it. Merry Christmas. <laughs>Starting off the news this week, the Japanese spacecraft Hayabusa 2 returned to Earth last week, and this week, the first images of the actual rocks that it took from the asteroid Ryugu were released to the public. Hayabusa 2 reached Ryugu in the summer of 2018 and collected samples from the asteroid the next year. Now it's back on Earth, the scientists working on the project have got their hands on material from the very beginning of the solar system. There are three chambers on the craft, A, B and C. A has been opened, B should be empty, but C, which at least as far as we know, is yet to be opened, should contain material from below the surface of the asteroid. It's going to be fascinating to see what these researchers can tell once they get to studying these magnificent samples. In other news is the brilliant naming and description of a new genus and species of ichthyosaur, Thassilodraco echesi. Named for the man who found it, Steve Etches of the Etches Collection in Dorset, England, this specimen is amazingly well preserved, with the front part of the body even including some ossified ligaments, stomach contents and decayed internal organs. Looking at the morphology of this animal, it's presumed to have been a deep diving creature as it displays some unusual anatomy and has been classified as an ophthalmosaurid. So a great ichthyosaur discovery this week always nice to see. And now over to Ben, who has a Christmas message for you involving t-shirts. Thanks Doug. Also in the paleontology news is an incredibly important paper that was published in Nature, which has demonstrated that the Lagopetids, small running adapted animals that lived in the Triassic, are in fact the sister group to pterosaurs. Not only does this fill in a significant gap between the pterosaurs and their relatives, but also further strengthens the placement of these animals as birdline archosaurs. This new revelation was made due to the recent findings of well-preserved cranial remains from Lagopetids, as well as micro-CT scans of their skull bones and the discovery of associated body skeletons. And interestingly, it seems neuroanatomical features that appear to be related to the enhanced sensory abilities of the pterosaurs were already present in the Lagopetids, hinting that these evolved before flight did. So this is an absolutely amazing discovery that helps paleontologists piece together the first steps of how the pterosaur body plan was assembled. And finally for this week is the naming and description of an incredible new dinosaur from Brazil, Ubirahara hubatus. I think. However, there's a bit of a problem with it. This compsognathid is the first non-avian theropod from Gondwana to preserve filamentous integumentary structures, as well as the first non-maniraptoran known to have such structures that were probably used for display purposes. This integument was unlike any other non-avian dinosaur we know of, with slender filaments at the base of the neck that got longer over the back to form a sort of mane, in addition to a pair of very long ribbon-like structures on the shoulders that have been compared to what is seen in male standard wing birds of paradise. So a truly incredible discovery, however the problem is that it seems this specimen had been smuggled out of Brazil, seeing as the laws of the country don't allow for fossils to be taken out. It'll certainly be interesting to see what comes of this and how future studies are impacted, but it's disappointing that such a remarkable find appears to have happened illegally. Anyway, back to Doug in the studio. Thank you very much, Ben. That's it for 7 Days of Science this week. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday. Or next Wednesday. Or on Monday. <laughs>